Hey, it's Brian. I'm back and it's time for another Fried Egg Friday video. It's good to see you all. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me. Today's topic, I'm just going to jump right into it. It's about the greatest suffering that we go through as rapture watchers. All of us have our own set of sufferings. And I heard someone say one time, if everyone in a big room was required to go throw their problems into a pile, and then the person said, hey, go pick somebody else's problems and take them and they're yours now. Nobody would want the other people's problems. They, you want the problems and struggles that are yours because you already know them, you understand them. and Plus, you don't know if you're going to get something worse. So we all have these different levels of struggle and we're at different places. And there shouldn't be any judgment on that. As I was thinking about this topic, a lot of people think, well, Susie's complaining about such and such problem, but I'm going through something that's 10 times worse. It's like, well, okay, maybe Susie's being petty, but maybe she's just in a stage in her life where she's dealt with a whole bunch of things and she's through those and she's just in a different place. So, you know, it's easy to judge people, but the reality is we probably shouldn't because we don't know. We're not in the other person's shoes and nobody really has an easy life. They may have easy circumstances, but that doesn't mean that they're okay inside in, in their headspace where they live. So having said that, what I wanted to speak to today is the problems, the struggle that we go through as believers in Jesus, as people who are looking for his return. And after some thought on this, I think what the most difficult struggle for the rapture watcher is, is living in a world, and it's not just people who are watching for the rapture, it's anybody who really loves Jesus. It's living in a world that hates the one that we love. The person that we love the most, the world hates. And that puts us at enmity with the world. Which the Bible says that's a good thing because the world's at enmity with God. If we're a friend to the world, then we are at enmity with God and we don't want to be that. We want to be friends of God and not of the world. But that puts us in a really difficult place. It puts us in a struggle position from day one. As soon as you start loving Jesus, you're loving this person that the world hated. They crucified him. They put him up on a cross. I think that the deepest and most profound suffering for me and the biggest struggle for me is that I live in this world, frustratingly so, that doesn't love Jesus. They're, the majority of people aren't looking for him to come back. They're not thinking on an eternal perspective. Mostly people are just thinking like, this is it. This is here and now. What we have here is, is it. When you die, it's like a lights out situation and it's over. With them embracing that type of a mentality, of course, they're going to be focused on materialism. They're not looking at the situation as a person does from the mindset of, okay, someone's keeping score. It's kind of like an organized football game or a basketball basketball game that has rules and there's umpires and there's people watching, there's referees and there's spectators. The rules are going to be observed there because people understand what those rules are and they play the game according to the rules. Well, if you have thuggery happening in some obscure place where there's no policing of any law or rules at all, <laughs> Anything goes, right? There, there are no rules. There are no structures that people are adhering to society-wise to keep them in line. And so it puts me as a believer and, and a follower of Jesus Christ in this strange position because I do believe that there's a righteous judge who's keeping a record of everything, everything, every minute detail, and there will be a judgment rendered at the end of a period of time, at, a, at the end of an age, and everyone will get their just desserts. It's just awkward to be in this world, but not of it. Personally, that's my deepest struggle. And I would guess that for most believers, that is also their struggle, their biggest struggle, because you're misunderstood, because they don't have a grid for your thought patterns of why you think the way that you do. And on top of that, everything is just not structured for God's kingdom here on the earth. It's not his kingdom yet. That's why we pray in the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're praying for it. We're asking for it. Jesus is saying, ask for that. Ask for that to happen. We are looking for that to happen. We want to see God's will done on the earth just as it is in heaven. Like if God says something in heaven, bam, it happens right now. Angels make it happen or his will makes it happen. It pops into existence if he's ex nihilo creating something. But we have a hard time here on this planet because we're of a different kingdom. We have a different set of rules that we operate in and God is in us. 
And Jesus said, if we love him, don't be dismayed by the world hating us because it hated him first. So it's like we go into this game knowing that we're disadvantaged, that we're going to be hated, that we're going to be persecuted at times. And, you know, that's the struggle of this life of faith. I would love to hear what your personal thoughts are on your greatest struggle. What is the deepest struggle that affects you the most in your walk of faith? I also wanted to say thank you for everyone who responded in last week's video. It was really touching, actually. The video topic was asking what your passion was for Jesus and why you have that passion for Jesus. And I shared mine. I was so touched by the comments that I read that I actually began designing a t-shirt based on the comments. I'm looking forward to sharing that. I'm making a video on like how I do a design and why I'm doing that design. And I'll share that in the near future. That's coming and I just wanted to say thank you for everybody's response. It was wonderful to hear why you're passionate about Jesus. And it was very inspiring to me. I loved reading those comments. And uh, this is a design that I made myself, by the way. Uh, he comes, I go, enough said. <laughs> if you want to grab one of these, uh, you can get it at rapturefocus.com. There's the uh, web address right there. So that's it for this week, guys. Thank you for joining me for these few minutes. Please go down in the comments and let me know what your deepest struggle is in your walk of faith. God bless you, and Maranatha.